Hi hobby friends, let's talk about the Gnarl Spirit Pack. Alright, I'm trying to keep it short and to the point today folks. I just moved house and I have to go away for a week from tomorrow, but I really want to get these boys done before I leave, so we're throwing the speed painting kitchen sink at these guys. But you know me, I can't resist an opportunity to do some funky lighting, and I think it'd be a shame if these guys didn't get a similar treatment to their skeletal foes. Check last week's video if you want to see how I did them bones. First stop, a burgundy base. This is a cooler red that will give us a good head start, throwing us over to the correct side of the colour spectrum. We're applying the same lighting first technique as I did with the Sons of Velmorn last time, so the next step is to load up with some orange and get spraying. As always, this could be done with brushwork, it's just that the airbrush goes about a thousand times faster, and time is of the essence. I'm really looking to find that Goldilocks angle here. I want a good distribution of lights and shadows across the main viewing angle, that is the front of each mini, but not just a 50-50 split, something a little more dynamic, which means pulling the light angle around towards the back of the mini a little bit. When that orange is done, I go in with yellow just to boost things up a little. What I'm really looking for here is a kind of sunset effect, as if our chaotic warband is entering the depths of the Gnarl Woods underworld during the glorious glow of the gloaming hour. It'll make a nice stark contrast with our skeleton chaps when both forces are on the table. The last bit of the lighting work is done with straight white ink, and it's a more typical value sketch. I'm thinking not only about the angle of my general lighting, but also what would be brighter in the overall composition. So for example, the lighter skin tones and the bone bits get a little more white. I wonder if one of these skulls back here is a chittering cousin of Mr. Velmorn himself. Okay, time to get stuck into the serious work. So serious, in fact, that Gramps here has put on his infamous hot pants and Ugg boots combo. What we're doing is blocking in the local colours, that is, the native colours of the materials, with contrast and contrast style paints. Using transparent paints means we can retain all the work we've just done on the lighting sketch, including the chromatic influence of our key light, that sunset orange. We'll be going back to reinforce the lighting later, but doubling down on the light like this gives us extra depth. The metallics get treated in two steps. First, everything gets one quick coat of Vallejo's metal colour Duraluminium. The very liquid consistency of this paint means it goes down really fast, and some of our lighting sketch shines through, but you do need a little confidence with your brush. Of course, you could use silver for the silver metals and copper for the coppery bits, but honestly, accounting for brush cleaning and paint box rummaging, I think this method might be faster. What we do next, to get those coppery bits the right colour, is go over all of them with an ink, Vallejo Skin Wash ink, which is a pretty indispensable member of my paint team. While we're here, we can also add blacks, oranges and browns to tarnish the ostensibly silver bits, giving all the metallics a varied, interesting texture. I even threw in a little blue to get some of those shadows nice and rich. Okay, last bit before bed now, the speed painter's best friend, oils. There is no preparation for this, no varnish or anything, I just go straight in with an all-over black wash. This will sink into all those recesses for us, giving us loads of definition and hiding a myriad of sins. When the black is done, I grab this very oddly shaped makeup sponge and clean most of it off. I'm not waiting for anything to dry here really, I just go in to clean up after the last one has been blackened. I also have some burnt umber on there for giving some richness and texture to stuff, and a little phthalo blue as well. The idea here is to filter in some cool shadows on the side opposite our key light, giving us maximum temperature contrast. I use fairly thinned paints laid on where I want shadows, then I take a soft, clean, dry brush and move that paint around a bit, blending out the edges. After an overnight curing, the guys are dry enough for our purposes, so time to crack on with some highlights. Since all the important blending work has been done for us, we can concentrate on finding some good colours and picking out prominent edges and surfaces. 
We're really sending home that lovely temperature contrast now with cool tones on the Mini's right side and warm on the left. I'm trying to stay conscious of that as I choose and mix my colors for these highlights. But that could be its own video, so let's move on to the last two stages. The airbrush is out again and I've mixed up a nice warm orange tone, which I'm filtering all over the warm side of the Mini. This is all just reinforcing work we've been doing throughout this whole process, but it really makes the effect what it is. When the orange is down, I add a little more red and very gently fill out the tone in some areas. And when that's done, I lift the intensity by going over with a really soft pass of fluorescent orange in the core area of the light. Fluorescent paints will always lift a lighting effect. The last stop is literally about five minutes re-establishing some highlights with desaturated orange and red, and then we are done. I don't have a time for you on this speed paint job. It went fast though, and though it wouldn't win any awards, it'll look super impactful on the table. If you liked the video, friends, give that thumbs up a hit and go check out some more stuff on the channel. There's a link to an open Discord server below where you can hang out with me and other fantastic painters. And if you want to join the most supremely excellent people scrolling across your screen now, check out the Patreon link as well. Cheers as always for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Thank you.